Hey everybody, today we're going to go over game four of this San Diego Club Championship U1400 division that I played. If you guys saw my previous video, you know that game three didn't end so well for me. So let's see if uh, I continue the losing streak on game four or if I was able to bounce back. So let's just jump right into the game. I was able to play the bishop's opening finally in this game. So that's e4, e5, bishop to c4, my opponent played knight f6. And I played d4. My opponent took on d4, and I played knight f3. And now black grabbed the pawn on e4 as well. So at this point, with the bishop's opening, you're going to grab the pawn on d4, attacking the knight here. And my opponent retreated the knight back to f6, which is the correct move. And I actually castled kingside here. The better move would have been to play knight to c3, and then develop the bishop somewhere. Um, and that's because you actually kind of want to castle queenside in this opening. So that's what I would play next time. But anyways, I castled kingside, not a big deal. My opponent played the obvious developing move here, which is knight to c6, attacking the queen. So I just retreated her all the way back to d1. And after bishop to c5, I actually played rook e1 check. And my opponent actually blocked with the knight here, retreating the knight back. And I immediately noticed the awkwardness of this diagonal here. So I jumped on that and I played bishop to g5. Um, it would have been a little bit better for black to just retreat with the bishop and guard the knight this way. Uh, but I understand it's a little bit weird after you've just developed the bishop here to actually bring it all the way back. So I understand that. But anyways, I played bishop to g5. And you can see already that I'm threatening to probably screw up the pawn structure in front of my opponent's castle position here, which he's about to castle, otherwise he'd have developed some of these pieces here. So <clears throat> my opponent played d6, and I played queen to e2. And the point of queen to e2 is to prevent my opponent from castling. And I know that maybe castling wouldn't be that bad for me because then I'd be able to screw up the pawns here, but I kind of just wanted to continue making my opponent uncomfortable in the opening. So obviously if my opponent castles here, then there's only one defender of the knight, but I've got two attackers. So I would just be able to grab the knight with my queen. So after queen e2, my opponent played d5, trying to cut off this diagonal for my bishop. Um, notice that he already played d6, so it's kind of slow having to move the pawn twice here to get to this position. But I just retreated the bishop back to, to b3. Um, a little bit better probably would have been to play actually bishop to d3. Especially if my opponent castles here, this is a little bit more of an active square for the bishop instead of kind of staring into the pawn here. But I retreated back to b3. And my opponent played bishop to g4, kind of pinning this knight. But you may notice that the eval bar has, eval bar has kind of shot in my favor a little bit here. So if you'd like to, I want to give you guys a couple seconds to pause the video and see if you can figure out how I want material in this position here with white. So take your time and think about it, and I'll give you the answer in a couple seconds. <clears throat> okay, so congratulations if you guys spotted. After the d5 move, this pawn is no longer guarding the bishop. The bishop's undefended, and the queen can actually come here, deliver a check, and attack the bishop at the same time. But... You also have to realize that you can't play this move right away. And the reason is because the knight on f6 here can actually retreat backwards, block the check, and also guard the bishop on c5. So first, before you play this move with the queen, you have to grab the knight, force the trade here, and then play the check with the queen. Because now there's no defense for this move. So I played the move... Um, Black played c6, and here I picked up the bishop. So now I'm up a piece for a pawn, essentially. And the pawn was lost, you know, obviously earlier as part of my opening. So up a piece, and my opponent retreats the bishop now back to e6. And I finish development. My opponent plays queen d7. I think he's preparing to castle queenside here because, again, because of the pawn structure here. Um, and I chose to actually play queen d4. And this attacks the f6 pawn here. 
And there's not an easy way to defend this pawn at all. Um, the only way, I think, to defend this pawn would be to retreat the knight back to g8, defending. But this is a really ugly-looking move. Even after they castle, now the rooks aren't connected anymore. It's just super uncomfortable. So, let's see what my opponent does. He just went ahead and castled anyway after I played queen and d4. And now, instead of taking the pawn on f6, I just grab the pawn next to the king here, which is also undefended. And my opponent played... Um, Knight g6. He's clearly he was clearly in my mind preparing to probably play knight f4 and use this open file against my king. But I'm not that worried about it yet. So I couldn't resist playing knight a4 here uh, because first of all this is threatening to fork the king the queen, and also I think this square is pretty good for the knight too. So let's see how Black responds to that. Yeah, he played queen to d6. Obviously getting the queen out of the way of the fork. And I played rook to d1 here, kind of x-raying the queen. And this is basically, at this point, finishing my development of my minor, of all my pieces, pretty much. And my opponent now played knight f4. Like I said, probably preparing to put a rook here, or multiple rooks. He's also got the bishop kind of in the area as well, in the vicinity. But at this point, I decided to just check the king. With the, with the knight. I think it would have been a little bit better to move the knight to d4 here, start putting even more pieces around the king, but I was a little bit worried about the attack, so I kind of wanted to keep my knight in the vicinity to help defend if I needed to. So I played knight to b6 and I checked the king. The king retreated back to c7, and now I played knight to c4, hitting the queen and the, the pawn can't take here because then I'm going to win the queen as well. Um, the engine really liked queen to a5, but I don't really think there's much of a follow-up after this. Uh, if the king has to move out of the way, but when the king does that, then there's kind of like a repetition of moves here. And there's not really another way to kind of capitalize on it because I don't have enough pieces here. So, let's see, go back to the game. Okay, so I played knight to c4. Like I said, black can't take. So we actually moved the queen to b4 here, which is a pretty good move, but as long as I can keep attacking the queen, they can't actually, my opponent can't afford to waste a, a move like taking the knight, right? So I played c3, queen moved again. Now I finally played knight to d5 because it comes with a lot of tempo attacking the queen. And now my opponent just played queen to a6, and at this point I didn't really see any more continuation here, so I just decided to trade the queens, which actually was the best move anyway. So I traded the queens, and then I also, after that, traded my knight for the bishop here on e6, just because I was a little bit a little bit worried about the bishop coming into the game here, given the opportunity. So we made that trade, and after I retreated my, my knight to a3, kind of a weird move, I would, probably should have just played knight to b2, but I didn't want to block the rooks. Again, it's not really a big deal if you block your rooks for a move or two. But um, I played knight to a3. My opponent finally got the chance to move his rook to the open file now and attack. So I played g3. My opponent played e5, which is pretty good because you might because he noticed that I actually can't grab the knight because of the pin due to the rook here. So I moved my king out of the way, forcing his knight to move, and he moved to h3. And now I'm just kind of bringing my knight back into the game. My opponent played h5. And I decided to lift the rook here. Because these rooks are kind of staring at two pawns, which aren't really going anywhere at the moment. I was kind of eyeing c4, and I probably could have played c4. But that would have also allowed my opponent to kind of push his pawn. So I wanted to, number one, guard the, the g3 pawn with my rook in case I decide to take back with the rook instead of a, a pawn. And secondly, maybe kind of attack this guy, who is undefended right now. So my opponent played h4 anyway, and I just now put the rook on f3, attacking this guy. And my opponent defended. And centralizing the knight some more, there are some, like, uh, you know, moves, kind of improving our position moves here. Um, and after we made the, those couple moves, my opponent finally decided to grab the pawn. So I grabbed with the, with the f pawn. Attacking the pawn here, and simply I just played king to g2, kind of solidifying this little defensive structure. 
and my opponent played rook to h6, probably trying to double the rooks on this file, also potentially doubling the defense of this guy here. But I immediately just jumped my knight up to g4 attacking, not allowing him to do this. So he played rook to g6, and now I missed a pretty nice tactic here uh, that you guys might also want to look at and see if you can figure out what the move is here to win a pawn or win more than a pawn. It's a little bit tricky. So if you guys want, pause the video, um, and I'll go over the move in a couple seconds. The move that I did not play. So that move is actually just grabbing the pawn here on e5 with a knight. And that's because if, the, if my opponent grabs the, the knight with his pawn, well, then he's hanging his rook here. So it's a little tactic that can win some material. And if you go ahead and do this, your opponent should not grab the knight. He should probably just move the rook out of the way. But then we would probably just retreat or something, and then we would be up another pawn here. So I didn't see that. Instead, I just played bishop to c2, finally doing something useful with, with the bishop in this game with my extra piece. And after king to d6, I spotted another tactic, which <laughs> isn't as good as the one I was just going over. Again, I could have played the knight captures here to win the rook. But instead, for whatever reason, I saw this, which was just grabbing the pawn with the rook instead of the knight. <laughs> so after the pawn recaptured, I grabbed the rook with my bishop. So I, I won another pawn there. e4, and now I'm just trying to trade rooks since I'm up four points of material here. I'm trying to get him off the board, but my opponent blocked with the knight. Good move. And we're kind of entering into the end game now. So let's see if I can... My end game has improved since the, the, last, the last game, which wasn't so hot. So I started simply just pushing my pass pawn here up the board. My opponent's bringing his, his king over, and now I've got a nice little defensive, you know, guarding structure here. My opponent attacks the bishop, and now I'm trying to trade the rooks, which re or the knights, which really wouldn't be good for black here. Because this would this would give me an open file with my with my rook. It's just and he needs these pieces to kind of create mayhem still on the board. So I don't uh, I can't pass this pawn and promote this pawn. So my opponent retreated. I started to try to get my king into the game. My opponent played c5 and I got my king to e3. And there was a couple other moves here. And this was, again, these, these this time control super long. And I, I think I was starting to kind of feel a little bit of pressure again or a little bit of frustration, I would say, just in the fact that I wasn't able to win the game quicker. But, of course, it's pretty silly of me. These are long games. And, again, these guys don't give up. These players don't give up at this in these tournaments. So you have to really grind it out. Um, okay, A5. Continued pushing the pawn. Defended with the knight, the passed pawn. And at this point, let's see. Okay, now I played rook to h1, getting the rook behind the pawn. This is the opposite of the last game where the rook was in front of it. This is the ideal setup. And after my uh, my opponent moved his king back, here is where I just kind of made it pretty inexplicable or kind of funny, I guess. One move blunder. I just played knight to e5. And this, uh, this just clearly hangs my knight completely. And not only did it, did it hang my knight, but now my bishop's also under attack. So I had to move my bishop. And I think this is just a product of being frustrated and, and probably being a little bit um, just disappointed in my endgame. Or, or, I don't know, a psychological thing again. But the good news he from here is that I was able to kind of bear down. And I knew, even though the material was pretty close now, I was only up a pawn in total. I knew that I was still winning because of these pawns here. So I moved the bishop. My opponent started bringing his king in. I played uh, g4, just defense, so my opponent couldn't grab. <clears throat> and my opponent played uh, king to g5. And luckily for me, this looks like almost like I've lost my advantage here because he might grab this pawn pretty soon. But there's a nice resource here, which is rook to h5 check. The king can't take the pawn. He can't come in here because of my king. And obviously all these other... Um, pieces are defended. So he has to retreat his king again. And I was eyeing c4 now for a while. And it, it would have been a really good move. It was definitely the best move in the position. If c4 is played, he can push this guy, checking my king, but then I can grab this pawn. And now my king can totally enter into the middle of the board. 
Um, and, and if he doesn't push the pawn, if he just grabs it, we're trading all of our pawns, but again, my king is getting in. And this is really what I wanted. He can either come this way, or he can start harassing the pawns over here, grabbing these pawns. So that would have been the best move by far. For some reason, I just didn't want to play this move, and I don't, I don't know why. It would have been best. But instead, after my opponent retreated, I played king to f4. And I saw this check here. There's a check that black can deliver on the king. And I was hoping that my opponent would go to c1, because if he takes a couple of these pawns, I think it's okay. But he, of course, could also kind of repeat moves here if he wanted to. And if he did that, I probably would have played c4 since I was thinking about it already. But regardless, he checked me. I moved my king back, and he did play knight to c1, which I was very happy to see. And yeah, he's attacking a couple pawns here, and I actually played a4 because I don't want to lose the a pawn yet, especially because, you know, then he'd be attacking the c pawn as well. So I played a4. He grabbed the pawn here, but now... I get my king into the into the middle, into the, the heat, into the crux here. So at this point, see, my opponent played c4, but the game is pretty much over now because of these two pawns. So let's see how this how this ends. So I played g5, check. My opponent retreats to f7. I play g6, check, because of the bishop. My opponent played back to f6. Then you got g7 attacking the rook. My opponent had to guard... You know, I had to move the rook, obviously, and guard promotion. So he does that, but then I, I get to play h7. So all I did was kind of basically move my pawns up, checking and attacking pieces the last several moves of the game. So I played h7, and my opponent just resigned here. This was this was the end of the game, because I was clearly going to promote on the next move, pretty much. So, I mean, if my opponent, my opponent grabs the pawn with the rook, I'm going to queen here, and I've actually pinned the rook. So next move, I'm probably going to come here with the rook. If he goes here, I can actually attack with the bishop, and then grab the rook here. And if he instead grab with the king, there's a couple ways to win. I mean, the easiest one is probably just promoting, grabbing the rook, and now you're, now we're up with an entire rook in this end game. so that's great. But actually, an even better move would be to play rook g5, Checking the king. The king, actually, the king can come here. The king comes here. Well, that's just checkmate. Um, if the king comes here, it doesn't really matter where the king goes because you're going to capture on the next move with the rook defending here. And, um, yeah, so that was the game. So it was a good bounce back for me. Um, I, got, I got an advantage in the opening, probably. I mean, it wasn't really a bishop's opening advantage. It was more... I did put on some pressure here, and my opponent, you know, did kind of blunder a little bit with the bishop. Um, I saw some tactics, I missed some tactics, but the end game was definitely better. The end game still wasn't as good as I would want it to be. But um, I think that my biggest, what I was most upset with actually in this game was later on in the game, towards the end, just not playing C4 when I could have. So even, even here at some point, just playing C4, I was worried for some reason about getting the knight in here, but that really would have made my life a lot easier. And it's all about um, getting your king active and getting your king in the center where he wants to be, helping to promote these pawns. So anyways, I hope you guys liked the video, and I'll see you next time.